All right, guys, we need to practice for the Putnam math competition. So let's solve problem two on the 2018 test. Yeah, I'm in. Ooh, what's this? A linear algebra problem? This is going to be fun. Trump, where are you at? We need to solve this problem as a team. I'm in the middle of watching the Boat Chi X Kita, a.k.a. Bokita Moments compilation. Can we do this later? Stop being such a weeb and come help us solve this problem. Bokita isn't even the best ship anyway, since that title belongs to Bonaji instead. I bet your choice of best girl is what? Kita? What a fucking normie. Rio is objectively the most base choice. Anyways, that's besides the point. Let's get started on this Putnam problem. All right, fine. So let A sub IJ represent the IJth entry of M sub N, and let S sub 2 to the N minus 1 be the set of permutations of the first two to the N minus 1 positive integers. Then, for ease of notation, for a permutation sigma, define P of sigma as the product from I equals 1 to 2 to the N minus 1 of A sub I sigma Y, and define D of N as the determinant of M sub N, which is what we're trying to find. Nice start with setting up all the notation. So, our main objective here should be to try to find a recurrence for M sub N and D of N. So our first step should be determining how to order the subsets such that the problem is the most easily solved. Hey, Sleepy Joe, wouldn't that change the value of the determinant? It won't affect the determinant since switching from one ordering to another will require a series of K column swaps followed by an equivalent series of K row swaps, which multiplies the determinant by negative 1 to the power of 2K, which is just 1. You should have paid more attention in your linear algebra class instead of looking at Bokita Fanart. Continuing on Biden's point, without loss of generality, we can assume that the sequence X sub N of non-empty subsets of the first N positive integers is ordered in this fashion. All the terms of X sub N minus 1 are first listed in their order. After that comes the subset with the single element N. And finally, all the terms of X sub N minus 1 are listed in order again, except the element n is appended to each term this time. If you're confused, here's what the sequences would look like for small n. Great idea, Obama. Then we can notice that m sub n can be expressed in terms of m sub n minus 1, as shown here. Now, Trump, why do you think is the underlying reason for that? Don't ask me. I don't fucking know. Here's a hint. It has to do with some basic set theory. Oh, are the row and column of zeros there? Because if I and J are subsets of the first N minus 1 positive integers, then I intersect N and J intersect N must always be empty? Yes, but that doesn't account for the other parts of the matrix. In particular, we can substitute an M sub N minus 1 because I intersect J is non-empty if and only if I intersect J union N is non-empty and vice versa. The block of ones on the bottom right corner is because I union and intersect J union N is always non-empty, since they must share at least the element N. Now, to obtain a recursive formula for D of N, we can use the permutation formula for the determinant. What the fuck is that? I thought the only way to compute the determinant of a matrix is to use Lagrange expansion. Again, Trump, you clearly didn't pay attention in your linear algebra class. This is another useful method for computing the determinant and in particular would be more appropriate for this problem than Lagrange expansion. All right, let's define a few more things here. Define S sub T to be the set of all permutations of a set T, and define S sub K comma. T to be the set of all permutations of the set of the first K positive integers, but with the first Y elements in the permutation being a permutation of the elements of T, where Y is the cardinality of T. Then we can let T be a subset of row indices from 1 to 2 to the n. Minus 1 of size 2 to the n minus 1 and let M prime sub n comma T be the 2 to the n minus 1 by 2 to the n minus 1 matrix formed by concatenating each row of M sub n indicated by each element of T in order from top to bottom and then removing the leftmost 2 to the n minus 1. Minus 1 columns of M sub n. We can observe that if T contains more than one element that is greater than or equal to 2 to the n minus 1, then M prime sub and comma T will contain more than one row with all ones. Now, Trump, what does this imply? Does it mean that the rows of M prime sub and comma T are linearly dependent? Yes, that's correct. Consequently, in that case, the determinant of M prime sub and comma T equals zero. And using our determinant formula, we can deduce that for all choices of T, that include more than one element that is greater than or equal to 2 to the n minus 1, the sum over all permutation sigma in S sub 2 to the n, minus 1 comma t complement of the quantity sign of sigma times p of sigma equals 0. 
turns out that the choices for t are even more restricted. Note that since the first two to the n minus one, minus one entries on the two to the n minus first row of m sub n are zero, the summation that Biden mentioned is also zero for any choice of t that only has one element that is greater than or equal to two to the n minus one, but that element is strictly greater than two to the n minus one. Hence, the only choice of t where the summation in question contributes a non-zero amount to the total summation form for d sub n is when t is the set of the first two to the n minus one positive integers. Holy fucking shit, I'm totally lost. That's a skill issue, Trump. All right, the next step is that we can establish that d of n is just the determinant of this matrix c sub n, so this is what we're aiming to find. Observe that since c sub n has an odd number of rows, an even number of row swaps are required to turn c sub n into this matrix, c prime sub n. Hence, the determinant we're trying to find is just the determinant of c prime sub n, which is composed of these two matrices, m sub n minus 1 and m prime sub n minus 1. Continuing on Obama's point, since the m prime sub n minus 1 has an even number of rows, the number of swaps required to turn m prime sub n minus 1 to this nicer form here that has the same determinant of m sub n minus 1 is odd. Hence, the determinant of m prime sub n minus 1 is the negation of the determinant of m sub n minus 1. Putting all of this together, we finally obtain that d of n equals negative d squared of n minus 1. Oh, and now we're on the home stretch. It's pretty fucking obvious that in the base case of n equals 1, d of n equals 1, then we can just use simple induction to show that d of n equals negative 1 for all subsequent n. Nice job on finishing the proof off, Trump. Let's fucking go, guys. We did it. Want to reward ourselves with watching some Boat Chi the Rock together? Heck yeah, I want to see some more Kawaii Bokita moments. You and Trump go at that, because I'm not a fucking weeb.